Yeah, one of my um, first exhibitions here in the Bay Area was um, two male curators, and that was 20 years ago, approximately, and um, they invited me in this show, and I'm like, oh, I was excited, like, it's a show going to New York, and, you know, so one of them says, oh, yeah, we would like to put you in the show, and then the other one says, um, yeah, we have no women in the show, so, you know, we need a female. So, you know, so that was my, um, <clears throat> that was my first exhibition in the United States, but it was absolutely not for my work. It was just because they needed a female in their curatorial project. So, um, that was just one thing. Yeah, and uh, I remember um, maybe 10, 15 years ago, like showing my my portfolio to someone in France actually, and then being like, I don't understand this. Like you're doing this, you're doing a garden, you're doing that, you're doing a library, you're doing like, this is incomprehensible. Basically, why don't you just, you know, do one kind of sculpture all the time? And, um, and it is so uh, revitalizing for me right now that I can um, I can define myself differently. I'm a mother. I'm an artist. I'm a gardener, and I was a gardener for years. And I can say that now. It's not like a social hierarchy thing. Like taking care of the earth is like a vital part of who I am. I do permaculture. I uh, I grew up poor. I grew up rural. I am white, I definitely benefited from that all my life. Um, I'm the daughter of an immigrant. I am myself an immigrant in the country of my father, so I never belonged and like belonging has been, you know, a backdrop of a lot of the things I'm thinking of. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Well, um, of course, we need to change who's the narrator, who tells the story. And that's why a big part of my work right now is um, getting stories where I'm doing um, questionnaires with people where the plants are teachers, um, trying to put on its head the relation we have with the natural world, which is a big part of my work. Um, as long as the white man holds the narrative, we're going to see those, those numbers. It's never going to change unless we just flip all the stories. And, and it's happening now, and that's why it's such a vibrant, exciting time for me artistically, because everything is shifting, like, and the, vo the voices are coming from all over, and thank God it's happening. Um, I'm... Um, I'm very mad at the education I've gotten and it's taken me so many years to deconstruct that education in which, uh, uh, particularly when I studied philosophy, you know, why, why wasn't someone like Descartes contextualized? He wrote, you know, he wrote his book separating, uh, mind and matter in capitalist Holland when, you know, Holland was the wealthiest state. And why wasn't his writing contextualized like, this is the beginning of the witch hunt. And like, it, it was all catered for men and I'm still so mad at that education because without giving, it could be very simple tools to contextualize where is this research coming from and like, you know, and, and with a little bit of background, you can own your history and like feel, you know, place like, okay, this is a man's uh, words in, the con in this, you know, economic context and, you know, this is what happening to women and to uh, everyone in the colonies, etc., etc. So, 
um, yeah, changing the narrator. That's uh, that's what I I have I my whole work is dedicated to. Not on not only um, <clears throat> not only plants. Plants is more recent, although of course the relation to nature is uh, core. Yeah, uh, uh, most of my work has been bringing um, subject matters that are alienated and put on the sidetrack to the center. Like, rather it's people living alternatively, but making really strong environmental choices and bringing those choices to the center. Sorry, <laughs> running up the stairs. <laughs> um, or agriculture, putting agriculture at the core of the debate. Like, agriculture is like fundamental to that's the first relation to earth and like and it is so it's driven us to the situation we're in and uh and uh yeah so changing the the, the story that's being told by roping it and roping it in the in the middle with my art uh yes i i am a feminist although I, uh, my first works in art school were very feminist and I think because they were in the French context that was so violent with women and it was like changing the gender of fairy tales and um, marrying with m women and things like that that seemed like that were um, things I wanted to address and when I left France and came here um, the urgency became different because it was the war in Iraq, it was like Bush came to power and there was like, there was so many other things that became important. And that's when um, environmental issues became more core to my work. And then eventually I realized it was the same thing uh, because what was done to nature and what was done to women is exactly the th same thing and but of course as women you're not giving given those tools and you cannot understand that and it's like through intuition and through different bodies of work and that's very much why i make research based based project a lot of times because i did not get the, this education and i had to do it myself through those projects and that's the only way i can grow and learn and and eventually eventually it, it all comes together because as long because of course we're all interwebbed and intertwined and um what is it mlk's um justice injustice anywhere is is uh is uh <laughs> is uh violence everywhere or something like that what the fact that none of us are free as long as one person is not free. It's like we're all intertwined and we're all um, interdependent and whatever comfort you have if someone's like in slavery to create your phone, like nothing is, how can you even be happy? But use that, using that place of, of anger to do work that goes in the right direction. So, yeah. <laughs> That's how I, that's how, to me, uh, my, my fe feminism is manifest in my work as this interlocking thing with uh, nature and women.